Hi, I'm Lily Kershaw and you're watching The Permanent Rain Press. I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, it's The Permanent Rain Press and today I'm here with the talented Lily Kershaw. How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, thanks for asking. Are you excited to be on the road? I am, it's, it's surreal. I've never been to Canada before, but I'm happy to be here today. So your debut album, Midnight in the Garden, was released in September. The album has recurring themes of heartbreak, struggle, you know, just all kind of dark, but where did you draw your inspirations from? I mean, everything is from real life. It's very personal and just, just things that happened that I wanted to take something good away from. You know, I thought that if I wrote a song about it, it would make a situation better, at least in, you know, in the way I, I held it in my mind and the way I held it in my heart. So, yeah, personal life. <laughs> so, um, is songwriting, how does that, do you write songs all the time, like when you're just like sitting down in a coffee shop or something? I've never written in a coffee shop. I feel like that'd be weird. I just start singing and then patrons be <laughs> watching me sing. Um, I, I write at home. I spend a lot of the day alone writing music. I just, I love playing guitar and I love playing piano and any other instrument I fiddle around with and pick up and invariably usually a song comes about. So yeah, I, I write every day as long as I'm not on the road um, or doing, you know, I don't know, walking a dog. I mean, I don't know what else I do. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I, so I write every day. I'm sure you must be happy to have that debut album <laughs> under your belt, you know, first album done. Yeah. It's, there's definitely truth to that. Um, it's weird because I'd, I'd never made a record before this one, and I had um, just recorded one song, as it seems, prior in a studio before this. So even though I was writing all the time, I, I hadn't learned sort of the art of recording music and bringing a song that's just vocals and guitar or vocals and piano to life. So I learned a lot um, in making that first record, and my producer and I did it in 14 days. We did 14 songs in 14 days, so it was very, like, run and gun. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually like already planning the second one out in my mind because now that I know like how to make a record sort of, I'm like, oh, this is so great, I understand this, I want to play with this, I want to, I'm very, I'm very excited. Now that you've got the ropes yeah, down, Yeah, but right? you're right, it's, it's very much like getting something under your belt, it's, you know, it's a learned skill. I've been, you know, writing music long enough that I feel comfortable in it. You know, I've started playing shows the last year, I'm starting to get comfortable with that. So, um, but recording, recording music and, and creating like a whole vibe around songs and giving them a new life is totally different than just writing the song, you know? Yeah, well, a couple of the tracks off the album were used in the couple past season finales of Criminal Minds. Yeah. So were you overwhelmed or surprised by the positive response to your music after the episodes have aired? Yeah, I, I, you know, when As It Seems was placed, that was the first song, I didn't really, like, think it through, you know? Um, I just sort of thought that'd be fun to have my friends be able to go buy it on iTunes. Um, so yeah, it was, it was overwhelming, but it was exciting and it was sort of strange. I didn't really imagine that the song would travel so far and now it plays on radio stations in, in Europe and, and you know around the world and that's weird. And it's just exciting, but it's, it's strange because I just wrote it in my bedroom and it, you know, it's weird to think that something that you know, could travel so far. It's weird. Yeah, well, it, um, it is go it's the, not going to be the season finale for a long time, but fingers crossed your music appears in their next season finale because it, it played so well to, you know, their storylines and the ending. Thank you so much. I mean, who knows in the future what the future holds. I, I hope that other shows use the music too. It'll be fun, you know? Just, it's cool. I like, I like um, when music is locked to picture, so, and I think that it can, you know, bring new meaning to a song and bring new meaning to visuals. That's why I think music videos are so powerful. Yeah, so I, yeah, I want one. So what some people who have heard your music on the show may not know is that you were in a couple episodes of Criminal Minds season four finale. You did which, your homework. <laughs> yes, we watch, I watched the show, I love it. So it was actually kind of a dark coincidence based on a serial killer from BC. I know, I read <laughs> you this in the newspaper. That. Yeah, so, um, but back to your acting, how was your experience working on the show? Um, it was great, super positive, you know, um, I was 17 when I did that, so I'm 22 oh, now. Young, right? I know, um, and at the time I was, although I was writing music, and I had been writing music at that point for like four or five years, um, acting was like a really, you know, fun thing to do, like, you know, it's fun to go and play and like dress up as, and be a character, and, uh, but I, you know, it was totally fun doing that show too, I just, right now I'm not like as much into mm -hmm. acting, I haven't done mm -hmm. enough years, because... I love reading music. Yeah, but, but it was a super fun experience. It was totally, everyone on the show is so wonderful. Matthew is a, a good friend. And um, 
actually all I know all of them pretty well but yeah now that your music um, is released your album's out do you foresee yourself acting again in the near future probably not for a few years maybe you know I live in Los Angeles and a lot of my friends are writers and filmmakers and we always have ideas to collaborate on projects together so I think I definitely down the road would want to um, do something with friends but it would have to be a story that we're all really passionate about and a group effort and um you know i so but for the meantime definitely i want to be touring a lot and writing a lot of music and recording so have you ever been to vancouver before no this is my first time in canada it's my first time playing like technically playing a show out of the country i was in paris a few weeks ago doing press um for some for as it seems over there um in france and i only played a few songs so i didn't like do a full set so this is technically like my first full set out of the United States. Did you have a chance to explore the city at all? I did, I did, but I didn't, I, I wanted to go to Stanley Park, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to Stanley Park, I did not get there. But I did, um, I got some really good sushi last night. I, you uh, were supposed to have good sushi. <laughs> so it was really good actually. And I and I got to go by my label and, and uh, they're moving, but I got to go see the offices and they're really cool and they have all sorts of cool stuff. And like the mail room is where they mailed everything out for like Lilith Fair back you know, in the day, anyway. <laughs> well, now that you're signed with Network, hopefully, and LA's pretty close, so hopefully you get to come up to Vancouver again. It's a beautiful city. I just want to hang out here. I just want to, like, move here. I'm already, like, getting this itch. Like, this is a great place, a great city. And I've had friends who come, you know, here for touring or for filming, because you guys film a lot in Vancouver. Big, big movie industry. It's fantastic. It's amazing. Well, okay, now for the... More fun questions. Yeah. If you could transport yourself to any fictional realm, which would it be and why? Well, obviously I want to go to Hogwarts. Like every <laughs> child, well, I'm not a child anymore, but there's like any person. I want to go to Hogwarts so bad. Your like, letter never came. My letter never came, and it's crazy. The The first book came out when I was like seven or eight. Uh, I think more eight, and then the last book came out when I was 18, when you're like legally an adult in the States. And then the first movie came out when I was 10, and the last movie came out right before my 21st birthday. So it just feels like it's, it's weird to think that something could take over up over half of your life to be involved with and invested. But yeah, I definitely I want to go to Hogwarts really badly. <laughs> Which house would you be in? Probably Hufflepuff. <laughs> I, like, I want to say Gryffindor, but probably Hufflepuff. I'm, a, I'm an odd one. <laughs> And we like to wrap things up with our signature question. If you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be and why? Um, probably uh, Dolce de Leche because I really like Dolce de Leche. <laughs> and then I could bite myself. That sounds really weird. <laughs> I, yeah, no, yeah, I like that. And it's like pretty color. It's like it could sort of like am ambery ish I mean, it's more in brown, but I ha I'm a redhead, Aub Auburn. I don't know. Maybe then I could be still be a redheaded ice cream Cohen, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> That's a creative answer. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Thank you for having me, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> Lily's debut album, Midnight in the Garden, is out now. Make sure you get yourself a copy of that, and see you next time. I hope you enjoy it. Because in this life, you must find something to live for. Because when the darkness comes a-calling, you go back to where you were before Cause this life